Hi folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel and this is going to be a fairly short video. Uh, this is all about clutch problems and I know many of us uh, when you have an old timer or you have a car that you don't use too often you park it for a long time like just this car was parked for 15 years on the side uh, the clutch is getting stuck and then we have an issue. Now there's a couple of ways you can actually release the clutch. One method is towing the car. So you tie up the car to another vehicle and then you have your friend pulling you. While you're in the back car, make sure the ignition is off and that the steering lock is not engaged. Have the car in third gear before you take off and keep the clutch depressed the whole time. And most likely you have a chance that you will be able to unseize the clutch. You could also find an open space and then start the car in gear and preferably first gear and hopefully you can get the engine to run and then drive the car and while you're driving it keep the clutch depressed accelerate brake accelerate brake accelerate brake and brake quite violently that should basically also unlock the clutch or place the car on the lift or an axle stand so that the wheels are free spinning and then you crank up the engine and you let it run in second or third gear with sufficient throttle now the wheels will then be spinning and then you start pumping the brakes violently and hopefully it unlocks but again if you do this on an axle stand guys make sure it is safe that it's not going to flip off the axle stand because that could happen i have done this on this bridge and it didn't help in my case and if none of that works then you have a problem because then you will need to take out the engine just like i did this car was sitting in a garage for 15 years a bit humid and it wasn't run all that time and the clutch is now stuck so I tried many different things to get it unlocked it didn't work so at the end I took out the engine so now let's have a look right here we have the flywheel and this is the uh, pressure plate and inside we have the actual clutch plate so let me open that up and then we have a closer look on what's wrong with it So let's take, now we can take the pressure plate off. Now I had opened this before guys, so I can't show you how it was stuck, but I had to use a screwdriver in between the actual padding of the disc and the flywheel to knock it off. And you can still see where it's been sitting actually. If you look on the pressure plate, we'll see the same spots. You can actually see these dots. That's exactly the holes where the rivets are of the actual clutch itself. It's really amazing that a bit of cohesion between the flywheel and the actual disc prevents it from disengaging, so it can't spin like this. And that's just because of the sheer surface where that cohesion is on. So let us have a look on how a clutch is working. This is the flywheel, which is rotating with the motor. And it's, if the motor is stopped, it stops. If the motor is running, it rotates. The clutch is not connected at all to the motor or the flywheel it is loose and it sits on a spindle and this is the spindle and this is the spindle which is going all the way back to the gearbox so in other words if there's no pressure on the disc then the motor can be spinning but because the disc is away from the flywheel and not pressed against it it won't rotate so now if you let the clutch pedal go, this plate is pressed against the flywheel and it's stuck to it. And the power of the engine is transferred from the inner plate to the outer plate through these rivets here. And let me show you that a little bit closer. This is the disc and it has three main parts. There is a lower disc, that's the disc which is facing the flywheel. And there's an upper disc which is facing the pressure plate and then we have the whole power transfer part mm -hmm. so imagine now that um, we have not depressed the clutch so now the two plates are pressed against the flywheel and power from the engine is transferred by the lower disc through the system over these studs to this metal plate here and there are three studs like this and they take up all the power from the engine to the gearbox 
in the middle we have a spline and in this spline you have the axle which is going to the gearbox and that's locked in. And that's why the whole system is now rotating. The springs that you see here, these are there to absorb shocks and have a smooth transfer between engaging and disengaging the clutch. Now let's have a look where the pressure plate comes in because we haven't looked on that. This is the pressure plate and you see a machined area and that's where the disc is sitting on. And the disc will be squeezed between the pressure plate and the actual flywheel which is going to be sitting right here. And that squeezing is done through those fingers that you see here. These are heavy springs. Here's the clutch again, the bottom side facing the flywheel, the top side facing the pressure plate. And here is the pressure plate. We're going to stick it on top of that. And here you see these spring-loaded fingers that are pushing the disc against the flywheel if we do not depress the clutch. This is what we call the tow-out bearing, and that's fitted on the spindle coming from the gearbox. It is not attached to it, it just spins freely on that one. And its only purpose is to depress the springs of the pressure plate of the clutch. So whenever you disengage the clutch, this whole thing will be pushed down and then the clutch will be running freely and you will have no more transfer of power between the flywheel and the spindle. There are many different ways to depress the throwout bearing. Some of them are hydraulic, others are mechanical, just like mine, and it works with a cable. And, but let me show you on how that is on the car. This is the bell housing and this part here is a lever which is pivoting on this point and on the other side you actually have your clutch cable coming in and here is this throw valve bearing and if you depress the clutch this whole thing is moved forward you see that and if you let it go it's been pushed back by the pressure plate and this is how you maneuver the springs on the pressure plate for engaging and disengaging the clutch. Forward is disengaging the clutch, backward is engaging the clutch. So each time you're going to change the clutch, you better change this bearing. Now it's time to order the parts. And I'm going to order a new pressure plate, a new clutch plate, and of course a new throwout bearing. And then we can put all that back together, but I'm not going to mount the motor immediately back into the car because I still have to do some work on it. Changing the timing belt on the Pinto motor, but also uh, recondition in full the Weber carburetors. And that's going to be a pretty long video on how to overhaul and recondition the Webers and actually align them and adjust them. So I hope you enjoyed it. I know this was a short video, but sometimes things that are short are nice as well. So. I'll see you in my next video and please don't hesitate to make any comments. Bye-bye.